up, you guys? Here's another episode of You Welcome with me, Marcella Arguello. We got a great one today. We have my guest, Lori Kilmartin, the incredible writer on Conan and my former mentor. She's so great, Lori <laughs> I, Kilmartin. I quit. I couldn't handle it anymore. She couldn't. She's tired and quit at the same time. Um, she will be at the Punchline in San Francisco October 16th through 19th. And we also have the incredible Nicole Thurman, yeah. great comedic actress you may have seen on a Black Lady sketch show and Shrill on Hulu. Thank you, ladies, for being here so much. Appreciate you coming out. Thanks oh, yeah. for having me. How are you? Uh, me? Yes. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, doing good, doing good. Very good. Yeah. Feeling good. I'm very happy to I'm be sp- here, very mm-hmm. comfortable. Good, thank you. Yeah, you both look great. I love Thank it. you. I love it. You, I lo- you know, it's one of my favorite things about this show is like all the women get like cute. You get like a little spiffy? Yeah, yeah. you get real cute. I wash my hair. <laughs> I love it. I know, I also washed my hair. <laughs> Warning. There are some Dave Chappelle Sticks and Stones Netflix special spoilers. So if you don't want to be upset, which you probably do, uh, don't watch this part. Okay, I want to talk about the scrutiny of comedy that's happening right now. Dave Chappelle's special uh, was, I mean, I found it very funny. The fucked up opinion I have about it is like, uh, the offensive jokes were like not creative. Yeah, right, you know? right, right. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with it. I, and I assume you girls watch, you ladies watched uh, the special. Mm-hmm. What yeah. are your thoughts on his special? I really liked it, and I, I, I felt like it to me read mostly as satire. It didn't read much as uh, of- offensive. It was one of those things where I didn't notice it until it came for me. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? Like I was like, I don't know if it's that offensive. I think it's okay. I think the, you could see the audience though being a little like. But you know when he said that like thirty six year old, there's no such thing as thirty six year old good pussy. I was like, okay, now now I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> like now I'm mad though. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Fun games until he makes fun of you. Yeah. So like, and I don't want to be that person because I want to be like more empathetic. But right. I was kind of like, I don't know. Like I felt like. Like he tr- he was treading on dangerous territory, but I felt like he always kind of recovered it and didn't ever go too too hateful or too mm. too dark. I don't know. I guess I I, I wasn't reading it that way. It I, almost seems whatever. like he's he's planting think pieces. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Like, yeah. Here's one. Here's right, another right. one. Here's yeah. another one. Right. I, I do think it's interesting that that comics I feel aren't used to being critically looked at. You know, right. I, 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 and. If you musicians have had this sort of attention from critics when they drop an album or a special for like forty years, mm-hmm. and you know Rolling Stone and Spin and Cream, like there's to- full magazines, de- you know, devoted to critiquing music, and I think comics have just gone under the radar for so long, and up, you know, through up through like the '90s, no one paid attention to stand up at mm-hmm. all in terms of critiquing it and I think people aren't used to it yeah and they're used mm-hmm. to getting away with a lot of really bad material Absolutely. or hacky stuff so not necessarily Chappelle but when other comics see Chappelle being critiqued right. they're like oh my god if he's being critiqued I have 40 minutes that suck I'm gonna be yeah. destroyed you know yeah. that's hilarious I didn't think about that yeah. I didn't realize that no one was critiquing stand-up back not in the really. day yeah. comedy is trolling I mean that's what yeah. Chappelle is doing yeah he's yeah trolling yeah. a lot of, of, yeah. of people And he's loving it because he's doing it with a smile on his face. And I think that that's part of what makes this kind of funny is that we've taken trolling to the next level. We've we've got, you know, we've got the government involved in getting these (laughs) W-2s. We get paid to troll. (laughs) The Guardian recently reported that there has been a study that the happiest and healthiest population subgroup are unmarried women with no children. Is that true? No, because I'm both. (laughs) <laughs> Ladies, how is, you are also unmarried also with no kids. Unmarried with no kids. How is your experience? I'll tell you what, um, it's mixed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's like, I guess I don't choose to be unmarried with no kids. It just kind of happened. I right. happen to be not great at relationships. I have to be horrible at picking relationships. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of happened, but I I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I wish I had a partner. I'm never sure if I wish I had kids. I'm not sure yet. I think I need a partner to know if I want to have kids. Sure. Um, that's just how I work. And I feel like day to day, I know that I I kind of call I kind of joke about it with people a lot. Like I live the treat yourself lifestyle. Right. <laughs> like if I'm having a bad day, I will like go shopping or right. I will go get a treat. You right. know, like I like literally will do something for myself. Sometimes I really enjoy that freedom that it gives me. Yeah, I mean for me it's the freedom to use my vibrator as I please. Yeah. I feel like that's one of the perks. So you yeah. keep a vibrator in your home? Um, absolutely, Laura. I do my, not. I have mine buried in the Midwest. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, so Lori, she has a 13-year-old? How Almost old is 13. It? Almost yeah. 13. Almost. But you're unmarried. I'm unmarried. So now this is a mix. I know. I have half of what you guys have. Yes. I can't, I, you, it's possible to get in a terrible relationship for a while, have the child, and then get out. Yeah. Right. That's what I did. Do you recommend that, Lori? Yeah. I can't recommend <laughs> almost anything I've ever done. <laughs> Just like the way you guys move, you mm. unmarried, childless women. If there's like a lightness to you That's true. that I don't understand anymore. Yes. And I recognize it on my former self. And it's weird, like I remember before I had a kid, I'd, you'd see something, like a new story of like someone's kid got killed and it's like, oh, that's too bad. Click, <laughs> don't care, moving on immediately. Sure. And now I'm like, oh, that could happen to me. And then I'm like spiraling for an oh, hour man. into, how do I, I how do I prevent that from happening to my son? And I'll never not be like that for the rest sure. of my life. I'll always have that. Wait, and how old were you when you had? 41. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so, you, so you got to I, live, I lived oh, a, yeah. a, really wonderful life Your that 30s. I don't remember. <laughs> were you yeah. living in New York? I was. Oh, okay. Yes. So it was like, mm -hmm. wow, you were really get fucking and sucking like crazy, yes. right? Like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was 19, my brother, um, he had a, his his first child. And he was like six months. My, my nephew at the time was six months. And my brother had a drinking problem. So he passed out on the couch while I was like playing with his son. Yeah. And we were the only ones home. So I was like playing with the kid and I was just like, oh, I need to take a shit. So I'm gonna go take this baby oh, and yeah. return it. But I didn't know my brother was passed out. And so I was like 19 years old, holding my six month old nephew on my lap, like, you know, rocking him while I took a shit. And I was like, <laughs> that I was like parenting, this right? is parenting. <laughs> this is right. parenting no one tells you about. Right, right, like, this right. is parent, And it really just has stayed with me <laughs> yeah. when I think about even the desire to have kids. Cause I'm yeah. 35 and I'm having yeah. baby fever. And um, it's been like a, a, a journey dealing with those emotions, you know, because mm -hmm. I met my friend's baby and I started crying and I was like, whoa, oh, this yeah. is not yeah. a thing that I do. Yeah. I've ever done. I have eight nieces and nephews. I've never cried when I met them. That was fucking weird as shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's tough. I mean, yeah. it's it's wild. And I, th I definitely think that there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. But I definitely feel like you only know the pros and cons when you're single and childless. Alive. I think it's probably hard to, but I think it's probably hard to see the, well, well, maybe for me, it's hard to see the pros when you're childless, though. Like, I don't, because because as a person that doesn't have kids, I don't, I'll never, I don't know what that connection is to a child. Like, right. I don't understand. Like, people are like, when you have kids, you'll understand. Like, if, if they spit in your face, you'll be like, oh, my God, that's my child. Like, you know, like, <laughs> how people are like that. And I'm like, no, like, that's disgusting no matter what it is. But I don't a, let my son spit Right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I think yeah. that parents have this kind of connection that we don't feel at all. So I think there's like we don't we can't really know what it's like to have a kid. I, I don't I don't know. We will never really know in, unless we have one. Also with our career, it's always like it's so up and down that just when you yeah. think you're gonna be fine, you're like, oh, hey, maybe I have a kid now. Then you like something happens. Yeah. Your show yeah. gets canceled or like whatever happens. Or a guy leaves you. Or yes. a guy leaves you, mm -hmm. and then you're like, well, now I have to spend all my money on my dating self, and that's mm -hmm. expensive, you know, just to be by yourself. I go back and forth, and I think sometimes I'm like, I just want to have a kid to have somebody to take care of me when I'm old. Right. <laughs> it's very selfish reasons, it and is. I want to see what a kid would look like that I had. Like, yeah. that's, like, I what more, I think right I now. I think yeah. more people should be comfortable dying alone in their bed. Like, what yeah. a beautiful image. I'm just, like, bummed I don't have someone to take my day out on. I just like, oh, <laughs> I wish I could come <laughs> home and just... You son of a... My dad was so blessed. He just, yeah. and he just ripped into us. And uh, I'm like, damn, what a... I would love that. But that's real. That's so fucking real. Because it's like, for me, it's like therapy ain't enough. That's one day a week. That's not going through right, it for right, me. I need right. more. Um, friends, you know, we live in Los Angeles. Friends are cool, but like, they're not always there. They're usually doing their own thing yeah. and worried about their own lives. And a lot of your friends will end up with partners around mm. our age, you know, with our 36-year-old sad pussies. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, truly, like they end up with they end up with partners, and you don't have anybody to come to and come home and talk to, and that feels like that's what that's why I feel like I want a partner first, and that's right. all I'm that's all I worry that's not all I worry about, but that's what I worry about more than a kid because it feels like you need someone to have you need a team you need a team yeah mm -hmm. you need someone to be able to bitch to or someone to be able to like talk 
shit on like all, everybody with because like yeah. they'll they're there with you. It's also good to be able to talk to a partner about the, your kid yeah. and like if you're in a situation where you guys don't talk or it's bad, then you're making all these unilateral decisions and it's yeah. it, it would be nice to have the input of somebody. There was this great thread on Twitter. Somebody started about Thoreau mm -hmm. and um, how, you know, oh, Walt I saw that how shit. everyone thinks Thoreau was like this man who just lived alone dramatically and, and really thought about himself. And it turns out his mother was doing everything for him, doing his laundry, coming <laughs> out, giving him sandwiches. She owned the land that Walden Pond was on. So. The, it isn't the mythology we think of, it's not true. Right. And so you guys are artists and uh, it, you know, you need, we all need somebody to help us like that. Right. And if you're gonna be really. the mother, then you're raising the Thoreau instead of being the Thoreau mm. in some cases. I always think about Beyonce because her father was that for her. And that's the thing that I don't think she, he gets enough credit for oh. because where she's at right now, is because her dad took so much on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other flip of a lot of successful women that even though we want to give them all credit, there's so much to building a successful person, period, mm -hmm. which is what your point is. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you can handle me, come get me. <laughs> <laughs> and we are now at the Q&A portion of You Welcome. If you want to submit any questions about life, love, pursuit of happiness, et cetera, et cetera, submit them to youwelcomequestions at gmail.com. All right, ladies, you ready for these questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first question. Uh, do you ever get performance anxiety or stage fright, even sometimes just going out with your friends or literally going up on stage? What do you do to combat that anxiety? I mean, yes, I think <laughs> we all do. I don't think no one doesn't not get anxiety or stage fright, but it just kind of depends on the scenario, right? Yeah, I mean, for me, I get it all the time. I get it going out with my friends. I get it mm. uh, in auditions. I get it doing shows. I get it doing something like this. You have to, like, be on at any time. Right. I'm a very, like, uh... Listen, if you want to leave, you can go. Can I go? <laughs> I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> um, no, but I, I get it. I mean, I get it all the time because I, I, the thing is, for me personally, it's about self doubt and mm. like self judgment. And so that's where it comes from. And it's something that I'm working on like really hard because I feel like the, the more I doubt myself and the more I'm judging myself in any particular situation, the worse my performance will be right. no matter what it is that's on true. a date, on a hang with friends, you know, like whatever it is. Um, so I've been really trying to work on that. And I, I quit, I used to drink, like I used, I don't drink yeah. anymore. And I used to drink, like even if I was going on stage, like doing an improv set or something, I'd have like, you know, a little bit of whiskey and like yes. a little something to warm it up. And same with like hanging out with friends, you know, one glass of wine wine, cools you off, and then you can go out. But like, now I don't drink. So it's been a really interesting progression to like learn how to deal with performance anxiety in every situation. I've gotten a lot better about it. What about you, Lori? 20 years of stand-up? I feel like I should start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that might solve some it would problems. Help. <laughs> um, sometimes before like a set, I'll think, am I really about to stand up on there, mm. on that stage? And I would look at the audience and I'm like, I don't like these people, I don't know these people. Why am I doing this? relatable. And a part of me is like, what if I just ran away? Like, w would there be any repercussions or would it just be like considered a one time crazy thing? Or could I get away with it? I mean, it, I've never had, it's like unwanted thought syndrome or something, right, but right, I've never right. done it, but I always, I think about it sometimes. When my dad passed away, um, we had a funeral and there was supposed to be no speeches. And then somehow whoever was in charge was like, does somebody want to give a speech? And then my mom was like, yeah, but it also has to be in English. It can't just be in Spanish. And then she went back to me and I was like, oh my God, I have to give a dual language speech. Wow. Impromptu speech. Right. And I'm not like the best speaker in Spanish. I can speak Spanish, but like not in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, and so that was the, that was like the most anxiety I've ever had. And yet it worked and I got laughs in both languages. <laughs> and I keep thinking every every time I get worried or I start feeling anxiety, I'm like, it's still not as bad as my dad's funeral speech. <laughs> like there's yeah. nothing that tops that. Yeah. I guess that's the, I mean, to combat it, what do you do to combat the anxiety is like, you just kind of have to face it head on, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That's the only way, or stop drinking and yeah. really deal with it. <laughs> well, stop drinking, yeah, but stop drinking, but also like realize what the source of it is. Not listening to that shit that your brain is trying yeah, to do. Yeah, the you. strength to take control of the narrative. Yeah. yeah. And not to overthink anything. Yeah. Just like what you said, because it's like you had the worst show of your life. 
it's not going to be that bad. So yeah. it's like, it's always, everything in comparison is going to be easy. So it's yeah. like, you just don't have to, yeah, you think about like, put it in perspective. And, and I also think the more you get used to it, like you just go, oh, that thing's popping up again. And right. Yeah. That's yeah. It, that, yeah. I think that's the thing about taking control of the anxiety is like, just yeah. being like, oh, that's part of what yeah. happens. Like, I get sweaty. Okay, I get sweaty. Yeah. Right. Wear hot shirts. <laughs> I always say that to first yeah. dates when I meet them. I'm like, I'm sweating because I'm nervous because I just met you. But just like, be clear about it. And you know, they're usually uh, real turned yeah, off yeah. by that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very important question we have here. Where do you stand on the washing, rinsing of chicken before cooking issue? These like Twitter things have gotten out of <laughs> Have you control. seen this, have Maureen? You seen this? No, but I mean, it sounds good to me. I, a, I am not a cook. I, oh, you don't cook. No. Okay, so you have no idea. No. I think okay. it's like, okay, I think it's like a black Twitter thing where black Twitter is It is a black like, Twitter thing. I know white people are nasty. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, I don't. First of all, I don't wash chicken before I eat it. You're, yeah, you shouldn't. No, you're supposed. It, doesn't it spread the, heat, the germs the, around? The heat kills it. Yeah, and the, oh. the, it does. They spread. said like it gets germs on your counter, and it, yes. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, right. That's right. like it's like a whole thing that's. You are supposed to wash the you know the counter or yeah. The, yes, or you the, yeah, wash, yeah. yes, you yeah. wash the area. Right. Yeah. Um, but, I wash my legs. I just want. <laughs> <to bed. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say, but do you wash your legs? That's good. I'm glad you wash your legs. Thank you, Lori. Was that news to you that people weren't washing their legs? I can see how you think the. It's rinsing down, right? Yeah. And it, and also I swim a lot, so I do feel like I get pretty fried in the mm. in the pool. Oh, but okay. yeah, I do. I, I can see how it happens. You can see a mix saying. up with the wipes. I may have done it a few <laughs> times, but uh, but no, it's a renewed vigor now to wash my legs. Oh great! Yeah, your right. legs are feeling and smelling good. You guys can touch after the show. Okay, great. Okay. I really want to do it on camera. No. <laughs> um, so we all don't. don't. Yeah, don't wash or rinse the, the chicken. chicken. Okay. Even the phrase okay. to me, washing your chicken, just sounds disgusting. Like, yeah. It just sounds nasty. Like you're sitting there like scrubbing Ooh, on your chicken. It sounds like a sex it. move. Could to wash your <laughs> chicken, bitch. Could there be fecal matter on the chicken? I don't believe so, off. but the, it doesn't matter because the, the heat is what kills any bacteria. But it, it could still be there. I mean, it's dead fecal matter, but you are... Is it's protein, that, Is that a thing? Like, think about, oh, like, okay. shrimp. Think Remember about they when, have, you, when shrimp has those little the poop things? Think about it? when you eat booty. Yeah, I don't eat Lori. shrimp When either. you eat booty, Lori. <laughs> Come on, when you eat booty. <laughs> you eat oh, that's shrimp. right. Put the shrimp in the booty bowl. <laughs> oh. Just, it's a little fine. dipper. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Cocktail sauce. Eat, eat it up. Come on, it's a delicacy. Yeah. And with that, your answers have been answered. Wait, <laughs> I said that wrong. Yes. With that, your answers have. No, I said that wrong. <laughs> your answers have been questioned. Man, your answers have been questioned. <laughs> there it is. Uh, thank you, ladies, for coming on. To thank you, welcome. You. And please um, follow these very funny uh, ladies on Ooh. Twitter. Two of my favorite accounts to follow. Lori with the classic joke. I mean, this bitch can write a joke. And it all has some wild perspective and hilarious videos um, that I really enjoy. Anyhow, you guys, you welcome, motherfuckers. This is a great episode. Tune in next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.